The sandstone dike is equally controversial, but can be explained as an ice wedge. Examples of both features in the upper carbonates imply that climatic cooling, if any, was not sudden. Carbonates extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. However, for global cooling to occur, that extraction has to exceed volcanic supply. The Dalradian shows no geochemical evidence for such an imbalance in the carbon cycle. This is the first of the 38 diamectites on this little island, and they're all interbedded with sandstones. Whatever conditions they represent, they've been repeated again and again. Yeah, the 38 repetitions uh, are built up almost a, a kilometre of sediment. And the most critical of these uh, lithologies are the diamectites, and it's to them that uh, we have to look for some indication of general environment conditions. And what were the alternatives? Well, the most ridiculous suggestion that's been put forward is that the boulders uh, uh, might have fallen out of uh, floating tree roots. Uh, but you know, 600 million years ago, there weren't any trees, so we can rule that one out. And then, of course, there's the impacts. Yeah, I've heard of that one. Sounds great, but there would have to be a lot of evidence for shattering, and we've seen nothing, uh, nothing like that. So the glaciogenic uh, model seems the best. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way the evidence is looking. Um, but remember, the bedding and the drop stones rules out a tillite. I, f I feel we've got uh, debris falling from floating ice into, uh, onto the seabed, being reworked by, uh, by currents. And then an ice-free uh, tidal environment. And warmer marine conditions? Possibly warmer marine conditions, yeah. But there are always surprises in you know, thick piles of sediments like these. And perhaps one last, perhaps one last outcrop uh, could uh, throw a spanner in the works. This is another diamictite with a huge range of grain sizes. And some of the class are very angular. They, they look familiar, this, this yellowy colour. Um, I think they're carbonate. Yes, they're soft. Yep, right. Let's see which one. No, it's not fizzing. These are dolomite class in here. You might think there's a pretty big range of grain sizes here, but this particular unit has got some of the biggest class in it you're ever likely to see. Some of them, some of them go up to, oh, almost two, three hundred metres across. This great breccia of the Garvelechs is unlike the other diamictites. It's a formless mass of angular clasts, some the size of bungalows. One dwarfs them all. It's a block of the lower limestone unit and almost a hundred metres thick. Its bedding is distorted as if a soft mass had rolled along the seabed. The Great Breccia is a mass flow deposit formed by collapse of the continental shelf. It extends as far as Western Ireland, more than 200 kilometres away. Its trigger was probably a massive seismic event. Reconstruction of the overall environment for deposition of the Dalradian supergroup illustrates how tectonics may have had a major influence on sedimentary fascias. The Rodinia supercontinent began to break up along continental rift systems. Major extensional faults caused the continental crust to thin, and the thinned crust then gradually subsided below sea level to form a series of fault-bounded basins, or half grabbins, which progressively filled with Dalradian sediments, until extension and faulting stopped 250 million years later. Earthquakes occurred continually on the basin-bounding faults, and if the slope on the seabed became high enough to be unstable, seismicity may have triggered collapse and mass flow deposits, like that of the Great Breccia. Tectonic influences, as well as those resulting from environmental change, complicate what geologists can deduce from fieldwork in sedimentary sequences. 
excellent as rock textures and structures on several scales are, interpreting them often presents several alternatives for the processes that produce them. As a result, new hypotheses about major environmental change, such as that for late Precambrian snowball earth conditions, generate much controversy. Field evidence may give rise to these hypotheses, but cannot fully confirm them. Geochemical data relating to the carbon cycle can help resolve ambiguities about climatic influences on the sedimentary record. Careful sampling through an entire sequence, such as that on the Gervalachs and precise carbon isotope analysis, perhaps offer a better way of confirming or refuting the snowball earth hypothesis.